What's up guys, Gimzen, and welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2023 for episode number 63 of the Qantas career mode. In today's episode, we shall do Paris, Tirreno, and Milano Sanremo. It is a version of Paris that's taking place in America, so it's not exactly Paris, but like give or take a few thousand kilometers with that. First stage of New England's road between Boston and Boston. Uh, we've left the Celtic tour on last year's calendar. But we're back with the Celtics, at least for one stage here in uh, in New England. I'd, I'd be honest, I'd, I don't know where New England... I thought Boston was like Massachusetts, with the Frenchest pronunciation you've ever heard of. Uh, but yeah, who's there then? Enric Mas, Vingar, Lirata, Ayuso. Good, good. We do have a good team nonetheless, and we have a sprinter and Ethan Vernon with a remarkable zero today. 5k to go. As we approach Boston, it's going to be a, a long shot if we want to win with Ethan Vernon, uh, a shot that not many players in Boston could make. Uh, I'm not sure who really takes threes in that team. I kind of stopped watching basketball in the past few seasons. But either way, I digress. Bentana is going to launch Tom Pitcock, who himself would launch Thomas, sorry, Ethan Vernon. Jai Hindley, the world champion, is in the wheel. He'll be my leader when it comes to the general classification of this race. There goes Ethan Vernon with 800 meters to go. And across the line, it's a win for fuck off. How? It's a win for Ethan Vernon. Ahead of Benny Germay and Mathieu van der Poel. I may have accidentally uh, simmed stage two, which was a sprint uh, won by Benny Germay. We've got a hilly stage upon us today with the Sega Mountain Road, uh, which will climb once by the looks of things uh and a circuit as we reach bristol today good days all around for the team which is absolutely perfect and hopefully we can get another win here on this new england tour 20k to go bentana has taken the lead of the peloton in willis road for the penultimate climb um i'm gonna play this just like i usually would play a sprint and uh just pace a lot like a lot a lot hopefully we can uh, destroy it some people, as the case already with the white jersey of Brunox, going out the back of the peloton. The green jersey of Ethan Vernon is going to lead out the Aussie one of Luke Plab, Finn Fisher Black in the wheel with Jai Hindley right behind him. There goes the climb towards Bristol for the final time today, the fourth and final climb here in Bristol. Come on, Plappy, do something good. Finn Fisher Black is well placed, so is Jai Hindley, so is Tommy Peacock. My GC leader, obviously, is Jai Hindley. As Magnus Sheffield goes for a very ballsy, a very ambitious move, which has not paid off. Yeah, that's I'm really not surprised by it. Uh, the toughest portion is still yet to come. No, actually, it's way behind us. Jai Hindley takes the lead of the peloton, and it's going to be a win here in Bristol for a rider from Contas. It's going to be... Chump Pitcock taking, nope, I may have celebrated, it's Jai Hindley. Jai Hindley takes it ahead of Tom Pitcock and Finn Fisher Black for a 1, 2, 3 of Qantas here in Bristol. This is easier than I thought. I think I finally have a good team. And we're on the way for stage number 4 here in Greenfield as we approach the Mount Greylock. A plus 2 for Pitters, A plus 5 for Ruben Thompson, and minus 1 for Jai Hindley, which is not good because I believe this is the only mountain stage of this race. A good thing it doesn't look too difficult, so I'm guessing the gaps may not be that big as Jai Lee has a 10 second lead on Magnus Sheffield, uh, only 23 riders left in the uh, lead time, I guess, following the stage in Bristol, which we've won. We're going to start the Mount Greylock. Uh, there is a breakaway of three riders in the lead with Valta, Armirai and Harry Sweeney. They're the one fighting for the mountain classification, so I'm not exactly uh, threatened by them or anything. I've got good conditions with Ruben Thompson and Thomas Pitcock. I think that could be just enough for Jai to, to not die and not lose like three years to someone like Henrik Maas, who definitely will bully me. That, that's not something we need to discuss. Like, that will happen. The question is, how much bullying will be done in the upcoming 13 kilometers of this stage? Seven k to go. The rhythm has increased a bit with uh, Larry Warbus and Timon Ahrensman. Interestingly, I'd not seen a huge increase of rhythm by uh, Omega Pharma Lotto with uh, Van Gilles and Van Edveld for obviously their leader, Henrik Maas. Henrik is, is right here, he's actually well placed. Jai Hindley is a tad behind, but we should be fine. The difficult portion ends now. Like, realistically, this is the toughest portion I've, I'll face all day. 
And Thomas Pitcock is doing a stellar job protecting the world champion and current yellow jersey of this race. As Simon Arendtman leads Van Riels, Quintana, Ayuso, Vingar and Nueta with five to go. Ruben Thompson is uh, taking the lead of this group. The aim is just to be with that group with 2k to go and we'll be fine. Ruben Thompson, Thomas Peacock in the wheel, Jai Henley in the wheel. It should be all good to go at the Mount Greylock. Are we going to take the stage? The answer obviously is going to be no. That will be for Leo Hater who wins atop the Mount Greylock ahead of Jai Henley and Ruben Thompson. Unless Vingegaard jumps me. Vingegaard has jumped me. That means... Ha! I think that means Leo Hater moves into the lead with a 3 second advantage on Jai Henley. Stage number 5 between Rutland and Lebanon. Not the country, because that would be more than 200 kilometers. Um, we sit 4 seconds down in the GC with Jai Henley, as I had calculated. My maths are once again shining through. Uh, Peters SP3 only 12 seconds down, so everything is still yet to play for. I don't think there's any mountain stage left. Um, so Peters definitely, definitely could do something in this tail end of the New England road. Um, I wanted to have fun, because I saw that the breakaway had like an eight minute lead and I figured I'd fight for the win. So I just based a bit in the uh, Rochester gap, not the Rochester, just the Rochester. Uh, we've, we've got 18 rounds left in the first rope. Um, yeah, that happened. That definitely did happen. 14k to go, we go. Wang and whoever was the other guy in the break. 66 rodders left in the first group as I've completely misclicked. Uh, Luke Plape is leading us. Bentana now takes his turn. Um, Felix Engelhardt decided to attack. I mean, at this, at this point, I'm not even going to ask why. Um, we're sprinting for Ethan Vernon today. But I could benefit from a good position of Jai Lee and or Tom Pitcock, as I've mentioned earlier. I don't think there's a time trial either on this uh, the, the end of this uh, New England's road. I'm not really sure what stages are up and coming, as Andreas Krohn has tried to attack to uh, to overtake and prevent the sprinters from doing anything. Magnus Sheffield goes, David Godu is following NASA. I rate the confidence from this rudder from Bahrain like donation of Bahrain because there's not much he can do but there goes Thomas Pitcock there goes Ethan Vernon there goes Jai Hindley it's a win for Benny Germay most likely nope he's, he's, he's stroked it's a win for Ethan Vernon ahead of Jai Hindley Jai Hindley is back in the leader's position of this race as it turns out there is another mountain stage here between Lincoln and the Mount Washington Fuck me, what? 12 kilometers at an average of 12% and a max of 17. Why have I never seen this climb before? And where has it been my entire life? Miral Kutkowski rides for Bordiani. That's many things here. Wow. I'm baffled by the climb. Uh, Finn Fisher Black with a plus 5, Pitcock with a plus 5, Jahini with a plus 3. Thank God. I'm not really sure why. But Jahini is struggling when it comes to his energy level. Uh, I don't know if it was... Ah, oh, because... I got Ethan Vernon to give water and therefore he had no protection for a while. Fuck! Because of that, I'm getting myself dropped literally like a dickhead. Uh, okay, Guillaume, 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 focus. The fuck is wrong with you? I'm losing the race at this point. I forgot the name of it. Ah, uh, we came back, but we are completely dead. I've I've played this so badly, like so badly. It's 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 ridiculous how shit I was. I don't really know what the fuck I can do here, and I'm also getting heavily blocked with Jai Hindley. so that's not fun. It really isn't. Who's in the break? No one important. We're gonna do something. We're going to switch our leader from Jai Henley to Thomas Pitcock. Is it smart? N no. I mean, yes, it's smart. Is it what I should have done at the start? No. Is this because I've played like an absolute prick? Yes. Thomas Pitcock is therefore my new leader heading into the final of five kilometers of this race as Henrik Mass has gone solo. Liwita is dead. 
but yeah, Enric Mas is uh, he's, he's on another planet. Valta will fight f with Enric Mas for the stage win at the Mount Washington. We will concede more than a minute. Um, yeah, horrendous, horrendous, horrendous effort by yours truly here. I've completely choked. We're gonna stay P3 in the GC with Pitcock. But this is nuts. This I'm I have I'm dumb. Final stage of this New England road between Portland and Portland. It's sprint stage, 80 kilometers. Fish, bash, bosh, and uh, we'll finish P2 of the GC because I've completely choked yesterday. Luke Plapp, Peters, Bentana, Ethan Vernon for one final attempt at a win here in Portland. Wait, isn't Portland in like in like the the exact opposite of Boston? Is there another Portland that I'm not aware of? I don't know. Uh, 1k to go, this is way too early. We've lost, well done. Congratulations, well done mate. Bravo, super. It's a, it's a win for Charles Fredheim ahead of Jonathan Milan and Anthony Turgis. Good, P2 in the GC. To Tirreno we go. And here is our lineup for Tirreno. Tarling, Schultz, Rafferty, Max Paul, Caleb Ewan, Matthew Bostock and Archie Ryan is the same lineup as the UAE Tour. Uh, time troll for Josh Tarling. Why not? Let's try to to to, to make the most of it. He's, that's Finney Tarling, right? That should not be... Okay, it is Finney Tarling. Good to know. And just like on the UAE Tour, it seems that Max Paul could take the uh, the advantage of our Archie Ryan. Thanks for time troll. A plus 5 today and an 83 in prologue as Stefan Kug leads in Lido di Camere ahead of Ethan Eta and Darren Rafferty. But Max is on his way and he's got one thing on his mind, the leadership position of Archie Ryan. It's a good thing that the Irish Rider cannot do a single time trial. Final kilometer, ultimo kilometer for Max Paul, and 16 seconds down on Bissega. Yeah, I think Max Paul is my uh, my de facto leader. Final kilometer for Archie Ryan, and across the line it is going to be 111 down on Remy Cavagna, a minute down on, on Max Paul. Yeah, I think I know my leader. And the winner of today's stage is... Remy Cavagna ahead of Bissega and Ghana. Great time trial by the former rider of, uh, of Quickstep, and the actual rider, by the looks of things, of Team Sky, even though I can't see the podium. Oh, that's because there's still some riders. Sprint stage between Camiore and Sovi Chile. Uh, do I have a sprinter? I do. Caleb Ewan, plus five. Final six kilometers, Nick Schultz is leading this train with Max Paul and Archie Ryan in the wheel. Okay, I don't know why Archie is there. Uh, I'm also not sure why he's the last lead out for Matthew Bostock. That's... It doesn't sound like a very wise idea, if I'm being honest. I it it truly doesn't. The fact that he cannot get past uh, Mate Moric is also not ideal. Let's try it maybe on the left side. Okay, well let's just sprint with Matthew Bostock and try to find our way through. We are about three quartillion kilometers behind. It's a win for Arno Deli. Nope, it's a win for Jakobsen ahead of Arnaudoli and Dylan Ronneveron. It is a top 10 finish for Kelbjorn right behind Artil, having beaten by a rider from Tarteleto Isorex. I might just call it a day. A decent day for the team. Um, plus one for Ryan, plus two for Max Paul on the stage between Cascada della Marmore and Belante. Um, Hilly finish. We'll see what we can do. I'm not sure we'll catch the break win. As uh, a group of two with Ariane Levins and Damien Touze has a 43 second lead over the peloton paced by us. We've been the only team today interested in catching the breakaway. Uh, we've just caught Jonas Abramson and I believe that it may be the end as well for Ariane Levins and Damien Touze. Uh, I am not losing to someone from Tarteleto Isorex today. Nick Schultz leads out Max Paul with Archie Ryan in the wheel. I'll actually swap the two of them as I need Max Paul to have a better GC result than Archie Ryan. It's going to be interesting, even like the, the, the whole system this year for Grand Tours, because, well, Archie is by far the best rider when it comes to the mountain, but because he cannot time trial for shit, Max is often in a better position. There goes Archie Ryan for his effort here in Belante, and it's going to be a win for Max Paul. Who may take the lead of this race, I'm not sure. Actually, I don't think so. Your typical Tirreno Adriatico stage with a very tricky finish up, down, never flat. It could definitely, definitely be quite chaotic, that's for sure. Max Paul is P2 of the GC, Archie Ryan is P16. The gap between the two riders is 50 seconds. The gap between Max and Remy Cavagna. 
only 4, so there's definitely something to do today, especially with Max having a plus 2. And we've entered that uh, difficult or tricky portion of this race, uh, starting with the uh, Madonna Dette. Okay, acceleration by Matthias Vacek, Warren Bargill, Larry Warbus. Don't know why. I don't like the fact that I'm getting swarmed here. So we'll increase the rhythm with Max Paul and Archie Ryan. It's the up and down that worries and scares me mostly because you can never really come back. It's either you're well placed or you're not. And so far we're not exactly well positioned. Fucking hell, they're accelerating again. Max is losing a couple of positions. Caleb, you drink great as the um, protector of, uh, of Max Paul here. 5k to go. Darren Rafferty is a tad behind, but he may end up coming back. We'll see if Archie Ryan can propel Max Paul towards potentially another win. Uh, let's actually put Nick Schultz in between those two riders as Archie Ryan increases rhythm. The start of Fermo, 3 kilometers, an average of 4.5%, uh, sorry. Who's there? Jonas Vingor can't follow the rhythm of, uh, of Archie Ryan. I know there's a bit of a cobble section, I think, in the final kilometer. I don't want you to, to, to be wrong, but I believe there is one. We'll go 92 with Nick Schultz, who's in my wheel. Still Jonas Vingor, 700 meters to go. There goes Max Paul. Max Paul versus Jonas Vingar versus Nick Schultz versus Archie Ryan. The win today is for Max Paul once again absolutely untouchable in this uh, Tirreno Ratico. It's actually a 1 2 3 as well for Qantas. Is the race day condition good for Max Paul? No. Is it good for Archie Ryan? Yes, A plus 4 as we leave Apecchio to Carpegna. Uh, I think Archie just uh, managed to once again become our GC leader. We do have. 21 second deficits to Jonas Vingegaard. I forgot a crucial thing about this stage. Um, and I've experienced it every time I think I've played this, or very often. Um, the breakaway always win. The breakaway always wins that stage. So uh, I guess I'm fucked. And there's some good riders GC wise. Larry Warbus is only two minutes behind, so is Julian Philippe. So I think we may be looking at the. Ah, Dan Martinez is also here. Either way, I think the winner of the race, and uh, not just the stage, but Tireno, is in that break because I could be pacing behind with Caleb Ewan, Matthew Bostock, and Nick Schultz, but it's not going to do me a great deal of thing if I can't come back on 20 riders. We're starting Carpeña for the first time today. Um, the breakaway, 6 minutes and 50 seconds in need. There's been, there's been many crashes, sorry. Uh, none involving Antonio Tiberi, I'm very surprised that he got dropped, uh, but some involving Archie Ryan, some all involving Max Paul, and some involving Jonas Vingegaard. So, we've had to use some energy to come back, mostly on Max Paul, meaning I think I've only got three riders, Darren Rafferty, Archie Ryan, and Max, to try and uh, prevent the breakaway from winning here in Carpegna. Starting Carpena for the second time, uh, we just have Archie Ryan left in this group. The gap is 6 minutes, the climb is 7 kilometers. There is no way we can catch the 7 riders in the lead with Larry Warbus, uh, Alaphilippe and Dan Martinez all being here, so all the contenders for the GC. Uh, we will fight for an excessive position, will be the best of the rest, the best of the favorites. The ones that could not defeat the breakaway because no one wanted to pace with me today. Matter of fact, we're going to attack with Archie Ryan. I, I, I've got nothing to lose, so we're gonna attack with Archie and uh, see, see what happens. The breakaway is one kilometer away from the summit of Monte Carpegna. Larry Warbus is still in that group, so he's on his way to win Tirreno Adriatico. Archie Ryan doing well to come back, uh, but I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna lack some energy. Gonna like yeah, I'm, I'm out. I'm gonna like 500 meters. I mean, I've crashed with Archie Ryan, so fuck it. So shame, we've lost another 45 seconds. I was coming back on, uh, on Larry Warbus. Not enough. <laughs> Not enough by the looks of things. We've dropped a minute by, uh, because of that crash. It's a shame. It's, it's a real shame. It's a real fucking shame. Well finished on the podium of Milano Sanremo, of Tirreno Adratico, sorry. Hopefully on the podium of uh, MSR as well. But we'll finish on the podium of uh, Tirreno, just like Paris-Nice. We've choked. We've choked. Uh, we were by far the strongest yesterday. If we take a look at the GC, um, we're now a minute 40 ahead of Jonas Vingar where we were 30 seconds behind him. But we're going to be P3 because Alaphilippe and Larry Warbus were on the breakaway. And yet again, no one, no one wanted to help poor little Qantas cycling. It's just, it's a tough reality of being 
the best trying to get into position here with um Caleb but it's not easy uh, I've, I've paced the entire day I am not kidding that's why there's only 60 riders left in the peloton uh, I've tried to make a mess it didn't work I mean it did but not with the riders I wanted it to work Derek please leave my train respectfully Derek please 2.6k to go, Matthew Bostock, Caleb Ewan are in prime position to potentially fight for the win in San Benedetto del Tronto, Julian Lafilippe just crashed. Julian Lafilippe just crashed, he was P3 this morning, hopefully he's going to be P not third. Uh, we've, we've been blocked, we've been remarkably blocked. It's owned by Arnaud Deli, Jordi Meus, Caleb Ewan P3. Uh, where's Julian? He's behind, did Larry Warbus crash? Sadly, no. Despite the crash, they counted Julian at the same time as Larry Warbus and everyone else. P3 in the GC, it is for Archie Ryan. One more race, it is the Milano San Remo, with some hills along the way. Let's go. Final race of the episode, Milano San Remo, La Primavera, the first monument of the, sea, of the season, sorry. Uh, la Clash Itzissima, as uh, I've been uh, learning to call it when uh, I was in Italy. Ben Turner, Ben Healy. Uh, Thomas Pitcock, Michael Matthews, Ethan Vernon, Corbin Strong, Caleb Ewan, it's a very strong team, fitness peak for Ewan and Peders, bit early for Thomas Pitcock, um, considering the uh, upcoming Arden Classic, but then again, when I remember the parkour of those classics, I don't think Thomas is what it takes to go ahead and win, um, so yeah, let's just um, do well, it's a more difficult version than the others, I think it was the Covid version, with Nila Belbo, Cole Di Nava, and we see Cipressa and Poggio. Let's see what happens. We've started La Cipressa for the final 26 kilometers of this Milan San Remo. Um, we're catching the breakaway and hopefully we can do a decent job. Ethan Vernon is leading the peloton as we approach the Poggio. 168 riders left in the main group. No one was dropped following our, our rhythm. Bit disappointed, if I'm being honest, as I have paced quite substantially, but uh, we'll have to make things work. I may have to swap Ben Tana and Ben Hilly. Both Bens are going to swap position as we enter the Poggio di San Remo for the final climb of this 299 kilometer Primavera. Ben Hilly doing well. There goes Bentana, 95 rhythm. Ben is going to take the of Corbin Strong. Have I dropped anyone? So far, the answer seems to be no. But we are yet far from the summit. We are still far from that summit. I've used the gel on everyone, which doesn't seem like a very wise plan. We'll attack with Thomas Pitcock. Have him effort with 90 just in case, as Michael Matthews now needs to chase down the attackers and make sure... That Thomas Pitcock has the, uh, a good enough lead heading into San Remo, where he could not win in real life a couple of days ago, a couple of weeks ago for you. Michael Matthews is following Connor Swift. Caleb Ewan in the wheel. Bentana is in between both groups. I'll put him back to uh, the level of Michael Matthews. Matter of fact, we're going to go like this. Have an 82 rhythm, but I think Thomas Pitcock is on his way to win his first monument. Bentana is going to start the sprint behind him. With Michael Matthews doing the same. Thomas Pitcock wins in San Remo ahead of Jonathan Milan, Caleb Ewan, Matt Pedersen and Wout Van Aert. It is a monument win for Qantas. It is our first monument this season on our first occasion. We've definitely taken some L's in this episode, both in Paris and on Tireno, but there was one win I wanted. And that, that one, that right there, Thomas Pitcock winning Milan San Remo, that was the win I wanted. And that sets us up beautifully for the next episode, where we will have the Volta Catalonia, which is still called the Amgen Tour of California, um, the Pan, Etroit, Vevelchem, Demlo, but also the second monument of the season in the Ronde for Flanderen, and Paris Roubaix. Um, Actually, maybe not, because we do have a new race replacing uh, Itzulia called Heraklion Store. It's a race in Creta. You, you, you would have got that. So, um, yeah, hopefully, 
hopefully you guys will be um, up for the next yeah. video um, but if you've enjoyed today's video then please do leave a like down below if you're new to the channel and want to see more of this content going forward feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and I'll catch you in the very very near future my name is Guillaume have an amazing day see ya Pass me the phone.